Goodnight Mommy is an Austrian horror film which claims it has the scariest trailer of all time. That may not be the case, however, it is interesting to note that this is Austria's official entry selection to the upcoming Oscars, so it definitely has that going for it. Now, in case you don't know, the story revolves around this woman who has facial reconstruction surgery, she's covered in bandages, and she comes home to her 10-year-old twins, Elias and Lucas, which, interestingly enough, the twins are played by twins who are also named Elias and Lucas, because that's the way Indies roll. The thing is, though, that Elias and Lucas don't feel that the woman behind those bandages is actually their mother, so then things start to go down. So let's get into the good, the bad, and everything in between, including the spoiler explained section, which if you just want to go there, go to this time marker and you'll be able to get to that section. However, let's talk about the good, starting off with the fact that this movie is not what is pitched in the trailer. It's something completely different. It's all a slow burn, but know that that doesn't mean that it's not a well-crafted psychological thriller. The first hour is pretty much just you as a viewer trying to piece things together, and at a certain point, like 10 minutes in, you sort of get a hint of what's going to happen at the end, but then those last 30 minutes is where it becomes a completely different tone and is that violent-ish type horror. The important thing to know about this movie is that it's more metaphorical than it is horror, sort of like the Babadook, so if you're not into that, this may not be your cup of tea. I, however, really enjoyed it and thought it was even better than the Babadook. The technical aspects of the film were also done really well. I like that they shot it in 35mm and they were able to really capture the house and even the fields where the kids played outside and make it feel very isolated in the same way that the characters felt very isolated. The acting from the three leads was also done very well. You had Suzanne West, I believe is how you pronounce her name, and she played the mother and you know from the trailer that she has like roaches and stuff crawling on her. The crazy thing is, is that this woman actually had roaches on her, and on top of that, she even trained with the roaches, and the roaches even got credit in the credits. The other crazy thing that I found interesting was that they had a script, they had something to follow, but they never really gave it to the actors, they sort of just had them improvise, and as we know, with having minors, they don't really sometimes know what's going on in these horrors, and they're obviously not allowed to watch the movie at the end, since they're not of the age, but they pretty much just pitched it at sort of like improvising each other, and setting up these sort of interrogation scenes between the two kids and the mother and I thought that that worked exceptionally well with the final product. On the bad side of things, there are some scenarios when you go and watch it again that you realize this doesn't really fit with the explanation and the reveals that you have later on so it's sort of like they don't really mesh. On top of it, like I said, it's more metaphorical than it is horror, it's a slow burn and those last 30 minutes is a completely different tone than what you probably will get comfortable with in that first hour and those three things are more just, you know, preferences but I know for a lot of people that may not be your cup of tea and that may be a reason for you not to watch it. However, I overall thought it was an engaging movie. I like the psychological thriller aspect of it. I enjoyed it. I would always say go out and watch it so you can make up your own mind and then we can talk about the ending which I'm going to get into in the spoiler section. So if you haven't seen it, again, go watch it and then come back here so we can talk spoilers as we get into it in 3, 2, 1. One. Now, if you saw the film, you would know that by the end of it, they pretty much wrap it nicely in where they tell you everything that happened. There's still some ambiguous points and some red herrings, but for the most part, they tell you everything that happened, but I'll still break it down, starting off with the original title. Now, the American one is Goodnight Mommy because they thought it was clever to be like, yeah, the kids put the mom to bed. However, it translates more to I see, I see, and I feel that that plays on the factor of a lot of people have complained, you know, five minutes into it, I guess the twist, I saw Fight Club, the brother was never there. I believe that the filmmakers knew you were going to guess it, and the big reveal wasn't supposed to be really the twist, but more so what caused the twist and what it affected. To summarize the movie in one sentence, it would be this. You have a 10-year-old named Elias. He has a father, a mother, and a twin brother who is his best friend. He first loses his father when they get a divorce. That's obviously going to break the kid. Then an accident happens, and not only does his best friend, his twin brother, pass away, but his mother ends up having surgery. When the mother returns, she is not mother of the year, doesn't console him in any way, shape, or form. So obviously this kid has had all this thrown into him, has nothing to rely on. He becomes devastated, manifests a version of his brother that instigates him to do all of these crazy things. And he ends up taking it out on the mom and pretty much torturing her. That right there is the quick summary of what happens in the film. And as we see with the cast interviews and such, one of the biggest themes is actually miscommunication. That whole idea that sometimes bad things happen, some accidents happen, but it's how we try to resolve them or don't actually resolve them, you know, not actually comfort each other, that causes even bigger problems as we see with this movie. Now we see from the beginning that there were clues all over the place showing you that Lucas does not exist. I mean, the mob ignores the kid all the time, doesn't give him juice, doesn't give him clothes, 
kills with even playing that heads up game completely ignores the kid the whole time because he wasn't there now a lot of people are like oh it's a manifestation or a ghost or a demon no no, no. it's all in elias's head he lost his best friend his twin brother so lucas ends up becoming elias's sort of vengeful side and where he instigates him to do all of these crazy things sure when you rewatch the movie you realize doesn't it take like four hands to do the things that he did and he's not supposed to physically be there so you start wondering like wait how is that possible but regardless it's not a demon or anything else it's just this kid went through a lot of trauma and now he's created this sort of image of his brother that's always there the next thing to look at however is what's the backstory and what happened to lucas now we know that he passed away and the movie sort of hints at three things now the one that i feel is the most clear and evident is that a car accident happened and he passed away in that car accident in that same accident is where the mother got her face hurt burnt whatever it was and had to have surgery however the movie hints at two other things the second one being that he possibly drowned and that Elias was near there we see it hinted early on in the movie when they're playing near water and then later on when the mother says it wasn't your fault for what happened to him and it's sort of like okay maybe Elias did have something to do with the death where the third one comes in is that the mother always seems to be scared of like lighters and stuff like that and as we see Elias likes playing with fire so perhaps there was another fire that happened and that's how Elias got her and also how the mother got her whole scars Regardless of what it really is, for me, it's the car crash. All you know and need to know is that Lucas passed away and the mother got burnt. The next thing to look at then is the mother. And there's all those theories of, oh, was she really there or not? I mean, by the end of it, when we realized that it was actually the boy Elias who was making everything up, then you realize, yeah, she is there. That is the mother. Now, a lot of people thought she was a demon or all this stuff. No, all those hallucinations, those nightmare-like scenes were really just nightmare-like scenes that came from the kid as Elias wakes up and he was imagining all those things. We also see a point in the story where Elias finds a picture where it looks like his mother actually has a twin. And some people may be saying oh it's his aunt but there's really no reason for it to be his aunt who he's never met because if the aunt who he's never met is willing to take care of the kids then she would also have been in a position where she would have wanted to have met the kids earlier on and also the aunt wouldn't have you know surgery done on her face for whatever reason or even lie that she's the mother she could have just said hey i'm your aunt you know you've been gone you've gone through a lot of stuff so there really is no reason for it to be the end. The other side of that picture is that it can easily just be Elias projecting his twin and making it seem like his mom had a twin and giving him more reason to become mad. And that's it. Like I said, the whole thing is about this kid who had all this pressure on him and all these things thrown at him that he finally broke down and he ended up taking it out on his mother who wasn't really there to console him and actually be a mother and at the end ends up even burning her. Now we see that one scene where it's this long shot and where the house is burning down and some people are like, you know what? That house is different from the rest of the movie. And I'm like, no, it's just the back of the house that we didn't really get to see. What there is to note in that scene is that the mother is actually walking out of the house, sort of like her soul leaving the house or something like that. And that's a really interesting thing to note because she's wearing the same dress that we then see a little bit later where you have that middle of the cornfield scene and where they're all finally happy. It's Elias, he's grinning. His brother Lucas is grinning and the mother is grinning and there, it's not that they're all dead, it's just that he has gone full Norman Bates and he actually thinks that he has the version of his mother and the version of his brother that he wants. What ends up happening afterwards if he goes to jail, that's for like Goodnight Mommy Part 2. As for this movie, it ends with this kid being completely broken down. Overall, I enjoyed the psychological thriller aspect of this movie. It was slow at points and I know that a lot of people may see it as torture porn. I didn't think it was there, I just thought again it was that idea of having a miscommunication or having miscommunication when an event or an accident happens and you're not there to actually fix it causing an even bigger accident to happen however as always i'm curious your thoughts if you checked out this film definitely let me know down below why you liked it or why you hated it and also your theories that you may have on this film we can discuss it down below in the comment section until next time i'll see you guys later